Good evening, everyone, um, and welcome to Concordia University of Edmonton Family Orientation. We're glad you could join us this evening, and uh, we're going to go uh, through a lot of different things that uh, we want you to know as, uh, as someone who has a student here at uh, Concordia University starting this fall. Uh, and just so you know, I'm not going to call them your children or your child. I'm going to call them your emerging adult for the rest of the evening. So when I'm referring to that, that's who I'm referring to. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to do uh, uh, the land acknowledgement because we do acknowledge that the land on which we gather is Treaty 6 territory and it is a traditional meeting place and home to many Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, the Soto, the Blackfoot, Métis, Diné, and Dakota Sioux. We respect the diverse histories, languages, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, and in Inuit communities who continue to enrich uh, this land on which we live together. This is going to be our agenda this evening. I hope not to keep you longer than an hour. Um, we will welcome any questions. If you have questions, you can throw those into the Q&A and I'll do my best to answer those. I may need to wait until the end of the evening. I am running solo. I've brought some of my, my uh, some guests that will uh, be able to interject into some of the, um, the supports that are available and some of the exciting things we have on campus this, uh, this fall term. Uh, but to get us started, I'm just going to our uh, President could not uh, join us this evening, um, but he did want to pass along his his well wishes to you all. So we'll just get that up right now. Good evening and welcome to Concordia University of Edmonton's virtual family orientation. Today I speak with you not only as our university's president, but also as a parent. I have a daughter who went through Concordia and completed a science degree here and I currently have my son studying psychology in our Faculty of Arts. I know how you feel. These are nervous yet exciting days. You'll soon discover though, as I have, that this university is a tight-knit community and we are deeply invested in the success of our students and every young person who comes through our doors. Q, which is what we call Concordia University of Edmonton in short, uh, will offer every student a variety of experiences, challenges and discoveries. And while the paths that our students take will be their own, we recognise the immense role that each family plays in supporting them. We seek not only to impart knowledge, but also to foster an environment of growth and community where every student feels seen, heard and valued. So from the moment they step foot on our campus, starting orient with orientation, uh, our focus is on their success. Our Q community is made up of people who are dedicated to ensuring the success of every young person. We're equipped with a dedicated student learning services team uh, where your child can hone their academic prowess uh, through the guidance of an academic strategist, uh, support from our writing and tutoring centre, uh, and the tailored aid of our learning accommodations services. We take immense pride in our Student Success Centre, a one-stop hub. It's a conveniently hosting a myriad of services from residence arrangements to career guidance, assistance for students with disabilities, and those in moments of personal uncertainty, we do have uh, a myriad of health services available for those students. So every student will have the resources and support to achieve their best. And with your support, we're eager to ensure this promise holds true for your young person. Communication is key. I urge you to continue to be engaged, to participate in our community events and to celebrate milestones big and small. In turn, we pledge to keep our doors open, our ears attuned to any concerns that you may have. We hope Concordia University of Edmonton will be a home away from home for them uh, and a community where they can truly thrive. So thank you very much for joining us this evening and I look forward to sharing your child's success together. Thanks, Tim. Uh, he's always a champion of the students. He was here all day today. We had our new student orientation here on campus today, uh, and it was 
it was crazy on campus and it was really exciting. You know, we all get very excited uh, in the summer when, when they're graduating and they're off on their new careers, but we also get a little lonely in the summer here on campus. So we really uh, are so excited that tomorrow's our first day of schools. Uh, but this is an exciting, um, Oh, pardon me. Uh, this is an exciting, but it can also be a scary and overwhelming time in the life of a new student. The transition from high school to post-secondary is most likely the biggest transition they'll make in their life up to this point. Before they leave the nest without looking back, here are some things to think about to help them make that a smooth transition. Even if you think you and your emerging adult are fully prepared and you've both been dreaming of this for years, uh, new students likely struggle a little, at least a little bit with the transition to university. Uh, one of the things that makes this so difficult for many people is that there is just, there's so much more the, to the transition than just the academics. There's suddenly a complete independence and they can be away from their parents from the first time. Uh, they could be a potentially away from their friends uh, or maybe possibly sharing a very small room with a stranger. Uh, the way they've lived their, la their lives in the last 17 to 18 years uh, is going to completely change. Um, but if they don't and if they don't have the proper support, they may struggle. The dropout rate for the first year university students in, in Canada is a staggering 30 uh, percent. But Q is here and has many programs and supports to help. And I do believe that's probably a big reason why a lot of you have chosen to send your students, uh, your emerging adults uh, to Concordia because of uh, so the supports we offer and the size of our campus. Think about uh, what you uh, can do to help ease them into this new lifestyle. And we're here to to walk you through some of those tips as well. Um, we just want to make sure that they don't become a statistic. So let's take a look uh, to see what are the differences between university and high school. Some of you may know uh, and some of you may not. Uh, we like to just highlight that, you know, university, the main change is that students are more self-directed uh, as opposed to teacher directed in high school. They'll need uh, to study, study uh, more hours outside of class, meet with fellow students to work on assignments, uh, and it just becomes a, an increase of personal responsibility and accountability. So some of these uh, differences are, you know, in high school, everyone attends high classes at the same time on weekdays, and usually everyone starts at the same time and ends at the same time, has the same days off. In university, students have their own schedule. Uh, they might have evening classes. Uh, they might have days off during the week. I know several students that like to plan their schedule after they've been here a couple of years uh, so that they have Tuesdays and Thursdays off so they can work part-time jobs or whatever else that they get up to. In high school, classes are generally, you know, between that 35 and 50. I know high schools are starting to get a little tight at the seams, uh, but and and so are we, actually. We're building a brand new building. Uh, but our class sizes are between 10 and 70 people. Um, our, we only have three uh, classrooms on campus that fit 70 people. Everyone else is uh, 50 or under. And uh, students, as soon as, as soon as they start getting into courses in their third and fourth year in their majors, those classes, uh, class sizes significantly, de significantly decrease, uh, which is a good, is a good and a bad thing. It's good that they know when they're there and it's bad because they know when they're not there. Um, in high school, there's, you know, generally light readings that often, you know, I know I skipped quite a few uh, and they're from textbooks. In university, there's a lot of heavy reading and it comes from textbooks. It could be journal articles, it could be websites and various other sources. In high school, there's frequent tests and assignments, each worth probably a small percentage of the grade. In, in uh, university, there may only be a few tests and a few assignments and probably worth a little bit more. Um, and um, this will be outlined on their course outline. So all, all students in, uh, will start classes tomorrow and starting in classes next week, they'll receive a course outline and it'll outline uh, the expectations of uh, the course, uh, what chapters they're doing, as well as what they're gonna be tested on and what consists of their grade. Um, attendance is taken in high school. Uh, we don't have an attendance line here for you to call in to let us know that your emerging adult will not be attending. Uh, attendance typically isn't taken in university. Some professors do allocate a grade to uh, a portion of uh, attendance, but a lot of times it's contribution in the classroom that they're looking for. Um, so uh, attendance may be assumed, uh, but they still need to show up for class, even if no one is keeping track. Important information is shared in the class. Information that's not 
often in the textbook. And you'll need to do this to do well. They'll need to do this to do well on the exam. In uh, high school, homework is checked probably frequently. Um, in university, I don't think homework is checked that often. And, and in fact, uh, there typically isn't a lot of homework uh, sent out. It's more like, hey, your research paper that's due on October 5th, you should start thinking about working on that now. And that's the homework that they, they are doing uh, throughout the year. Uh, in high school, teachers are all around, constantly checking, making sure students are keeping up. Um, in university, students have to have that responsibility to make sure that they're keeping up. But the great thing about Q is we do have we do have a great, amazing faculty that uh, get to know our students by name, and they often will check in on students. Uh, we even, in fact, have a bounce back program uh, that uh, we'll probably chat about a little bit later that will connect students um, and to make sure that they're they're getting through their studies. Uh, so in university, students are more self-directed than in high school and have a responsibility for their own self-management. Uh, they need to be their own point person. And that can be challenging, especially in their first year. Uh, so that's why we want to make sure that you, uh, you uh, as a parent or as a family or as a support person of a, of a new Q student, that you have some of the information backing you so you can help direct them in the right uh, direction. But just so you're aware, due to privacy laws, we cannot share any information with, with you as a support person parent, even if you're paying the bills. Uh, we can't even share it with, you know, any guardians, uh, not even your cat, uh, with out written permission. Now we uh, students can you can request to have uh, your student fill out a written permission form, uh, but. We're hoping that with your support, uh, we can hope that they will try to navigate this journey into independence uh, and just know that we are here to help along along the whole way. So we wanted to share some of our top tips on how to ensure this transition to university and how Q is here uh, to support you and your emerging adult, your new Q student. Um, so the first tip is to go to class. Uh, again, it's it's uh, not a man, you know, a lot of students uh, don't, uh, may choose not to go to class skipping. Uh, they're probably not going to get penalized for skipping. They're, no one's going to phone you to find out where, you're, where the student is. Uh, but we always encourage students to go to class as much as possible because that's where the answers are. Uh, the rigor of university classes is a lot different and uh, from what they've experienced in high school. The pace is much faster and the material is a little bit more complex. A university term is only 15 weeks as opposed to that high school term, which is 20. So if they don't pay attention and they don't stay on top of things, it can be really easy for them to get behind and get completely lost. Um, but we're hopefully not. Um, so uh, there was a survey just done, uh, a survey for um, our institution of how many hours outside of the class students are studying. And the average, uh, so the average hours uh, spent in class is about 15 hours. So class, um, each course that students take is roughly about three credits. And each course uh, that's three credits is three hours per week in class. So if a student has a full course load of five courses, uh, they would have 15 hours per week in classes. Of course, science labs and seminars also add to those hours in class. Um, and it is not unheard of for students to reduce their course load and take another year to complete their studies. Um, but on average, outside of the classroom, Concordia students stated that they were they were studying at an additional 13 hours per week outside of that. So that's a good indication um, for every hour they're in class, they should be studying an hour outside of class. Uh, so that's uh, something to give you food for thought. So 30 hours a week is uh, going to get them on the right track. Uh, but I would like to right now introduce one of our faculty members to kind of give you a little bit more insight into the whole classroom experience and the expectations. Uh, so I have here today is Sean Thompson. Uh, so I'd like to welcome him to speak. Uh, go ahead, Sean. I better make sure he's he's here. Well, I just need to unmute my mic. I'm oh, there he is. <laughs> Perfect. We do everything in Google Meets and classes when we were doing it online during the pandemic. So hello, uh, my name is Sean Thompson and I'm an instructor in the Faculty of Management and uh, I teach business and I teach uh, cybersecurity information security to uh, both the undergraduate and the graduate students. And you see, well, 
Um, Angela is making some really good points about uh, you know what students can expect in the classroom and what the uh, expectations there really are. Is that you know coming to high school and to university is that transition from kind of childhood to adulthood. Because as an instructor, that's what I see. I'm not seeing a, a teenager. I'm not seeing you know a high school student. I'm seeing an adult, and I expect uh, them to conduct themselves as adults, which means that they're taking responsibility for their education. Uh, and unfortunately, one of the things where I see students struggling a lot of times is they kind of coast a bit rather than taking every opportunity to learn. So that means, it's, as Angela was pointing out, showing up to class. Uh, you know, being proactive in getting their assignment work done and in communicating with their instructors. I think that's a big difference there is in, you know, the high school environment, students become accustomed to the teacher giving them all the information and telling them what's, what to do. Where in university, we expect the students to be proactive and come to us with questions and to, uh, you know, if they're struggling with something or they don't understand something, we expect them to come and ask us questions. We're there to help and guide them. But it's the same thing with uh, getting their assignments done. Uh, you know, as Angela was pointing out, the load is quite different. You know, we don't typically give homework assignments out. Uh, if it's an assignment, it's an assignment that they are being graded on uh, in their assessments. And therefore, they need to be meeting their deadlines. And if for some reason or other, they're unable to meet those deadlines, you know, they need to be proactive again. Like a, an instructor will be understanding quite often if there's extenuating circumstance or something's going on in their life, uh, you know, and, and cut them some slack to get it in on time or to have an extra day. But you'll sometimes see students wait until the last minute. The assignment's due today, and now they want an extension to tomorrow. And, you know, again, that's not fair to the rest of the classes. So, uh, often those requests get turned down. Uh, another thing where students uh, in the class can um, strive to excel more is looking at when there's opportunities. Most, we don't take attendance, but we do look at participation and students who are actively participating tend to do much better in a course, uh, but also looking at opportunities. Like myself in my courses, sometimes I'll give students bonus marks and I'll say, you know, attend this, um, seminar that's outside uh, the course, like in information security, we do an InfoSec seminar every month. So I'll often tell my students, attend this InfoSec seminar for one hour, write me a summary of it, and you'll get a bonus mark. I'll get out of a class of 20, I may get, you know, three or four students that actually take advantage of that. And it can make all the difference in the world. Um, so that's kind of the advice that I can, uh, I can think of to offer you on this. I'll turn it back over to you, Angela. Thanks, Sean. Uh, so time management is really key. Uh, and I think often uh, uh, students uh, don't get that. Uh, in high school, they didn't have to. It was, you know, uh, they were able to, you know, a lot of students are, uh, didn't have to do the readings and they could show up and, and get really great grades. It uh, And that's where sometimes it can be a real shock when they come to the university is that, oh, they actually need to do the readings in order to get the grades. Um, so we advise them to start seeking out support. So tip number two is make sure they're seeking out those supports. We have a ton of resources to help students succeed, but the trick is that they have to seek them out. Uh, we can send them in a newsletter and post it around uh, around campus, and we do advertise all these supports, um, but they have to actually seek them out and come take advantage of those. Uh, we, we, you know, we have a writing center and we have tutors available to students. And don't forget, professors like Sean hold office hours for students to get extra help or ask questions. Students should not hesitate to attend these office hours. Instructors want to help. Uh, they're not bothering them by showing up, and I promise they won't think less of them for having questions about the class material. They actually look forward to meeting and getting to know their students. Uh, moving on to tip number three, engage the supports early. Uh, we have a, uh, the sooner that they start uh, 
finding out about the resources, uh, talking to our writing support, speaking to our library, the better they are going to be equipped so that they don't uh, wait till the last minute, they'll actually feel have that confidence to move through their assignments and get them handed in maybe even early. Uh, I don't know how many early assignments you get, Sean, but <laughs> uh, but here to talk about uh, here with us this evening to talk about all the supports that we do have on campus is our vice president, uh, Campus Life, Dr. Carmen Arth. Hi, sorry, I'm busy finding my buttons here. Uh, hi, welcome. Uh, good evening. Thank you for um, joining us tonight. So yeah, I'm uh, Carmen Arth. I'm the VP Campus Life and Associate Professor of Psychology. So I'm excited to welcome you um, to Concordia and I'm excited to welcome the students. You are students, you are emerging adults to the Q community. I was actually a Concordia student way back in the day. Um, and I know what a difference um, being a student at Concordia can make in our lives. And I was thinking about this and I was thinking, you know, I can only imagine what it must be like as a parent, kind of watching your student go off to university. The feeling of, sorry, my dog's barking, but the feeling of pride, the kind of maybe nervousness. And I was thinking about my own parents and they likely felt a whole lot of relief. Partly like, oh, she's, you know, I lived in a small town, so, oh, there she goes. Yay, phew, she's going. And also, oh, phew, relief, she made it. Made it through high school, made it through, you know, kind of what turned into a couple of gap years and made it to university. Because I think university really represents hopefulness and, and a path and, okay, they are maybe set on a course of action that's gonna get them to somewhere good. Um, and I think that's true. I think it's absolutely what university holds if students yeah. take that. And so I, I, when I look at students, I, I kind of think, wow, they made it. Um, cause, cause nowadays students um, face a lot of obstacles. They have a lot of things thrown at them. I think we all have a lot of things thrown at them. And so it not only means they did their jobs really well as students and like throughout, you know, grades one through 12. I think it also means you all did your jobs really well as parents and caregivers. Um, because now here you are launching these young adults, these emerging adults as they begin carving out their path, their new life path um, as adults. So I, I think I think it's a great kind of sign and I think it's a great um, kind of opening. So as I was listening to Angela and Sean, um, they talked a lot about the importance of students working hard in classes and meeting with their instructors and working hard outside of class and kind of taking note of, of um, how parents can support that and notice that. And, and I echo that sentiment. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the supports that we have to support students um, with their academics and beyond their academics. And one thing that I also want to say is that it's also really important if you actually have leverage or influence um, with your yeah. young adults, um, I also would urge that you support your students to engage in Concordia community activities and the life and the social programming and the wellness programming and the fun stuff because that's a really important part of the learning as well. Um, and people need to be able to blow off steam or just have fun and build those social connections. And it'll help them with the learning and with the hard stuff and with the stress. So if you have that leverage to help influence them in doing some of that, and of course balance is important. Um, I would definitely uh, support having students engage in the activities and there are many. Um, so when it comes to some of the supports that we have, I know Angela mentioned um, tutoring and the writing center. We actually offer five hours um, for each student. 
uh, free tutoring each term. We have a writing center. We have supplemental instruction. So if students are struggling with any course and different students might struggle with different things. And sometimes when they reach post-secondary, a, a topic that was, or a, or a subject that was sort of simple to them might be a little more difficult or something that was more difficult in high school might all of a sudden come easy because it's more interesting. So it's kind of unpredictable what kind of um, supports they might need if they need any. Um, we have a, a space on campus called the Student Success Center and there we have uh, a ton of supports. We have learning strategists that will actually work with students who may find that the ways that they studied or didn't study throughout their high school years isn't serving them well in university. So what Angela was saying about the pace might be a little quicker, the demands might be a little higher. They might go, oh, oh I didn't really learn how to study and now I might need to. I have no idea how. Or some people may have good study habits, but they might need to tweak them. We have learning strategists who can actually help them build those kinds of strategies, tailor them to how they need to learn or how they need to be kind of retain information and things like that. So I would absolutely, if if your your student or your your emerging adult is talking to you about like I don't know how to do this, you don't have to come up with that. You can actually say, hey, I hear your your school actually has some people that can help you with that. Um, we have learning accommodations. So if, if, a, if students are struggling with things and they're, they kind of need supports, additional supports to have equitable access to learning, we have all kinds of learning accommodations and we can get assessments um, done so that they can get whatever supports that they need. We have counseling available on site. We have um, lots and lots of community relations as well. So if people would rather have counseling off site, we have um, lots of relationships so that we can uh, help people get counseling off site. We have a Q psychology clinic. And so we have lots of um, clinical trainees doing their doctoral programs. And so there's lots of psychology programming through there. So mental health is obviously a big thing for everybody and especially uh, students that age group. And so there's lots of mental health supports. We also have peer support and peer supporters are often easier to approach, easier to talk to than a therapist or a counselor. And the peer supporters are um, available and visible and trained. And there are other students just like the students who come and talk to them. So they wander around campus and they actually have a desk that they sit in the Student Success Center and then they can go somewhere private and talk to people. And so if people just need to blow off steam, they can go talk to peer support. Um, and we have career services. So if somebody doesn't know kind of what path they want to take or if they're in the right program or what to do, like I'm taking this, I really like it, but can I get a job at the end of this? They can go talk to the career services people. So there's, we have a ton of supports and I'm only kind of touching on how some of those supports play into action. Um, but I would absolutely support your student if you have, again, if you have the influence, if you have that leverage, if you're not finding that you have kind of the information or the um, kind of resources available to you to give them what they need if they're stressed or if they're not knowing how to do something. Remember, we do. We have them. You've gotten them to the point where they got to university. Like I said, you did what you, you, you did your job there and you get to continue doing that as parents. You get to parent them. And at the university, we have people who can do their jobs and we get to do our job. So absolutely, if you can support them in letting us do our jobs, we would love that and we will do it. And so I think that's where that partnership comes into play. You get to parent them and we get to work with them in that academic setting. Um, and then they get to be the bridge between. So um, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for caring enough to come to a parent orientation or a caregiver orientation. And uh, 
thanks for supporting your student in coming to Concordia. So thanks. Thanks, Carmen. Uh, and I, I just wanted to echo about, because uh, it leads into our next tip, uh, is encouraging them to have the fun, uh, encouraging them to do uh, engage in more than just the academics on campus. Uh, so the next uh, really important tip is self-care encouraging them to take care of themselves. Uh, university is a time for students to explore and express themselves in a new yeah, environment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with yeah. peer support stuff. This past oh, week so really a little... you're just still on. We still got you on there, Carmen, I think. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. Oh, it's Sean. Oh, it's Sean. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so sometimes when students are in those, they're exploring new ways of expressing themselves, um, sometimes partying, sometimes long hours may result. Uh, if they choose to ignore sleep, possibly diet, even exercise, uh, their academic performance will undoubtedly drop. Stress can build up uh, from poor self-care coupled with a full class, full course load. Uh, students should establish, you know, some kind of exercise routine, whether it's, you know, the free gym membership uh, that they have here at the fitness center with their QID, uh, even if it's something as simple as walking uh, uh, down the river valley. Uh, right behind us here is uh, the beautiful hundreds of kilometers of uh, pathways. Uh, there's an off-leash dog park. You know, it's, it's a really beautiful way to connect with nature and kind of relieve that stress. Um, now, next, uh, couple that activity with a simple, consistent diet, uh, not the poutine that I see going out of the cafeteria constantly. Uh, we have a lot of great options in our cafeteria, uh, but students st still seem to tend to uh, the poutine. Uh, but if they were, if they can maintain uh, a, a bit of a healthier lifestyle uh, while they're going through this, because it could be stressful, their body and mind will thank them along the way. Um, so right now, I would like to actually introduce Nicole, who is our campus wellness manager on campus, to tell us how they promote uh, health and wellness and mental support on campus. Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Nicole Hotelli. Um, uh, like Angela mentioned, I'm the campus wellness manager, and I've just got a few slides here to share with you. So at Q. Um, Q is really committed to promoting health and wellness to our entire Q community. So not only to students, but also to employees. And so my department, Q Wellness, along with my team of peer wellness student volunteers, we offer a lot of different activities, workshops, campaigns, kind of the some of the fun stuff, but also educational opportunities throughout the year. And we offer all of our programming for free. If I can get the next slide, please. So this is just a picture of our team. <laughs> um, and so we've got 13 student volunteers this year, and they can be spotted around campus with their beautiful, bright kind of gold shirts. Uh, next slide, please. So one thing that might be important for you to know if you're curious about what we offer is that we have a Google site and you can find it at a tinyurl.com uh, slash Q wellness. And on this Google site, we've got a lot of different resources, not only events that we're running, also the workshops that we're running and additional resources in all different areas of health. Uh, next slide, please. I'm a visual person, so I'll just show you a few pictures of some of the projects that we have going on on campus. Our Pleasure Plaza on the left there is our sexual health display. So there's lots of information around sexual health, around HPV. Um, we offer free products there as well, and students can help themselves at any time. And the top center picture, that's our menstruation equity project. So in all bathrooms on campus without urinals, we offer free products for people to help themselves. Uh, just below the products, you see a bunch of greens, and we actually have three tower gardens on campus. So these are hydroponic grow systems where we grow greens and different herbs on campus. And again, this is open to students and employees to just help themselves. So if they brought a sandwich and there's nothing green on it, they can pluck off some leaves of romaine or some Swiss chard or some kale and add that to their sandwich. For students living in residence as well, they might take some to cook something up in um, their kitchen, but people are welcome to help themselves. 
Um, we do have a lot of other programs as well, and we partner and collaborate with many different departments on campus. So related to, you know, maybe studying needs, those academic needs, we do also offer noise cancelling headphones that people can just sign out in the library, just like they'd sign out a book while they're in the library. Um, as well, we have happy lights. So these are the LED light therapies lights, um, especially in the winter months. If you, um, your student isn't from the Edmonton area, and isn't used to winters without sunlight um, or a lot of sunlight, I guess a not as many hours of daylight, then they can borrow a happy light. And we actually in the winter months have a happy station set up in the library as well. Uh, next slide, please. So one thing that's coming up at CUVE, for example, one of the events that we're running is a speed friending event. So this is a great opportunity um, if um, your emerging adults are new to campus and want to make some new connections. So it's kind of like if you've heard of speed dating before, but it's to meet new friends and make new connections. And we're going to have an ice cream sundae bar there too. So it'll be fun. They can get a snack and meet new people all in a fun um, atmosphere. Next slide, please. So I know this slide is a little bit overwhelming, but again, it gives you an idea of some of the projects that we offer, some of the events that we'll be running throughout the year, and some of the workshops that we offer as well. One thing that um, sets Q uh, apart from some of the other post-secondary institutions is that a lot of our workshops, such as Safe Talk, the ASSIST, which is the Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training, the Mental Health First Aid, we offer all of those programs for free at Q. Most other institutions you're paying like $250, $275 for a certification um, such as those workshops. And we run them several times throughout the year, often during reading breaks, so students can take advantage of it when they're not in class time. So it doesn't take away from class time. We offer a variety of other workshops as well um, around nutrition, around alcohol and drug awareness, um, building healthy life strategies is really looking at stress management as a nice uh, practical workshop so it makes it relevant to them um, as well some things that I haven't mentioned yet we do offer cooking classes and we have cooking demonstrations so we're going to have one at the end of September um, on campus focused on having like a cost-effective Thanksgiving meal um, we do have wellness displays around campus so when we run campaigns for example in early October we'll have the HPV awareness week um, then we'll have displays around campus and we also have an Instagram account where that's where most people um, students are, are connected through is through our Instagram. Um, next slide, please. So that's a little bit just about what we offer. Um, it's not an exhaustive, exhaustive list, but it gives you an idea. And I welcome any questions that you might have in the Q&A. Feel free. I'm happy to, I'll be staying on the line and I can answer those questions as the evening goes on. Thanks, Angela. Back to you. Thanks, Nicole. Um, Nicole is very passionate. Uh, I was uh, able to go to a trip uh, with Portugal with her through um, the university uh, study abroad program. Uh, and we just had a great time and it just really iterates how passionate she is about uh, ensuring student well, well being on campus uh, and really makes uh, me want to go back to school uh, most days. So, um, so when students, pardon me. Uh, so the next uh, co the the next top tip is the coping strategy. So uh, Nicole has a ton of those things going on in her area. Uh, so one thing that they sh uh, students need to start thinking about is when they start to struggle or when they get a little stressed out, what do they turn to? Uh, maybe they like to exercise. Maybe they like to play video games. Maybe they like to have a long chat with you. Uh, they do need to find healthy coping strategies and finding ways to re easily rely on them uh, during times of struggle uh, if they find themselves in times of struggle on campus. One uh, mistakes that students often make is they suddenly have a lot of freedom. Uh, they may turn to less favorable activities, such as eating poutine, or, um, you know, a lot of them will become legal and be able to drink. A lot of them will uh, party uh, and do other things. Um, it, th these aren't healthy uh, coping mechanisms. They're really tempting, uh, but this is not a long-term strategy, and it can actually make uh, university um, 
harder rather than easier. Uh, we do have a um, inquiring mind, a three hour workshop on maintaining good mental health. We've got building healthy life strategies, a two and a half hour workshop, identifying stressors and building a plan to manage them more effectively. But just know we're here along the way. We have the supports we get. We have a ton of partners in the community, uh, you know, Bell Talks, uh, he, he for she. Uh, we've got a, a great uh, backing behind us. So in, in Ensure that your students are, your emerging adults are seeking out those supports, doing that self-care and uh, figuring out really good coping strategies for times of stress. I myself have just taken up meditation uh, and we do have a meditation room on campus. Sorry, it's our multi-faith room. I consider it my meditation room, uh, but you'll often see students in there taking quiet time, whether it's in prayer or whether it's in meditation. Uh, and it's a really great, uh, great way to help deal with stress. But it took me a long time to figure that out. Uh, and then last, uh, but definitely not least, uh, is uh, kind of echoing what uh, Carmen had said is about getting involved. Uh, one of the things that makes this transition challenging is that it can be really lonely, especially if they're away from home. Uh, in fact, one of the number one reason why students leave um, university, believe it or not, is loneliness. Um, so students should try and find an inner circle that makes them feel comfortable. That could be a club, uh, you know, if they're LGBT. TQA. Uh, we do have a pride couple in class. We have a Black Students of Society class. Uh, we've got a number of different clubs on campus to help students feel connected. Uh, don't have a club that they're interested in, then they should start their own. If they want to start a crochet club, uh, I'm kind of shocked that we don't have one of those already. Uh, one of my ambassadors is starting a pre-law club this year. Just finding a way to connect uh, and finding a group of friends, whether it's in residence or other students in their same major. Um, they're just trying to find a, a group where they fit in. The great thing about Concordia is you could be connecting from students across all different areas, all different interests area. Um, and that's what really makes our, our, our community uh, very unique. Um, so we want them to have a, a support system, not only in academics and not only in um, campus wellness and our campus success center, we want them to find friends and uh, connections. So that speed friending event is going to come in uh, very handy for some students. It's also a fun way. And of course, free Sundays, you can't, you can't uh, deny free Sundays. So, um, you know, at Q, we have a Tegler Center. If you haven't been on campus, feel free to come on campus. We are an open campus. Uh, feel free to pop in and take a tour around. Um, but we do have our main center is called the Tegler Center, Robert named after Robert Tegler. Uh, and it's a great way to feel connected. All of our events happen here um, from Christmas markets to our parades to our, um, our cultural uh, um, celebrations um, all happen. And students have to walk through that space probably a good half dozen times a day to go back and forth to class. So it's really hard not to get involved or to be um, sitting at a table with someone enjoying what, what's happening uh, going on in queue. Um, now, we don't necessarily recommend that students try everything. Oh my gosh, that would be completely overwhelming. Uh, attending classes and making an effort are a part of this as it is building a social network. If they can make it through their first term intact, sane, healthy and with a GPA over 2.0, they're going to be fine. In all likelihood, they will graduate. So that's our top tips. Uh, but one last thing, don't forget for them to encourage them, as Carmen had said, to have fun out there. These are going to be the best years of their lives hopefully. Uh, and if they set it up right, it's going to be an amazing adventure, one that they will reflect on for many years. And we here at Q, all of us here are so excited and honored to be a part of that journey. So I want to move on uh, right at this point to talk about some of the opportunities that students can take advantage at some point during their time that they're with us. Uh, first up, uh, I do have uh, our last guest speaker for uh, this evening is Margie Shep, who is our funding and awards manager. Um, and she's here to talk about some of those uh, opportunities that students have and opportunities for you to lighten so that we're not lightening your wallet too much and students can uh, do a little work to get uh, find uh, ways to pay for their education. Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Angela, for the introduction. I'm sure as parents, you have lots of questions about the financial end of things, especially if this is your first child going to university. And so our office here at Concordia, our financial aid and awards office, is here to help students navigate through those options for financial aid. 
Um, so there's one of the most common questions that I get asked is, um, how will I pay for university? And it's a very good question. Many universities subscribe to the philosophy that there are four pillars of financial support for a student to have the opportunity to pursue a post-secondary degree. The first pillar is typically the parents or the family support. And parents will contribute to a student's cost of studies relative to their financial capacity. Sometimes this is done through a registered education savings plan. Most RESP plans require a verification of enrollment to withdraw the funds. And so your, your student can make a request for that from our registrar's office through their online services for students. Another pillar of support is the student self-help. Um, students can bring money to the table through their own part-time uh, work and summer jobs and savings they may have collected prior to university. A third pillar is government assistance programs. When family support and student earnings are not enough, there is the option of government student financial assistance, and it's most commonly referred to as the student loan program. Much of this program involves debt, but there are some grants available for students from low-income families, students with disabilities, and students with dependents. A final pillar of support is post-secondary scholarships. Universities also believe that supporting students with financial resources in the form of scholarships and bursaries is worthwhile. We have many scholarship opportunities here at Concordia throughout the year. Many of these opportunities are automatic because a scholarship is based on your grades, your merit, and it's easy enough for, for us to identify students who are doing well in their classes and getting good grades. So some of those awards are done automatically. Uh, bursaries, on the other hand, are based on financial need. So students do not have to have good, necessarily good grades for a bursary, but they do have to demonstrate financial need. And again, we have an online application and a process for identifying uh, students' financial need. And in that case, students would have to submit an application for that. So some things require an application, some things do not. Uh, for example, we just opened up a scholarship opportunity that, you know, it requires a paper application. It's called the Lois Whole Humanities and Social Sciences Scholarship. It's a $5,000 award. And the competition opened. There is a deadline coming up October 1st, and students will have to fill out that application to be considered in that competition. So speaking a little bit more about scholarships, I hope your, your students have heard about the Alexander Rutherford Scholarship. It's for students coming from high school. It's funded by the government of Alberta, and it recognizes and rewards that academic excellence of Alberta senior high school students up to $2,500. So students apply for the scholarship when they start their post-secondary studies. Uh, but in order for the government to pay them that scholarship, they know, need to know that the student is in post-secondary. So there is an application form that students need to fill out. It's available on the government's website, uh, studentaid.alberta.ca is where they'll find it. It's an online application and they basically just have to tell the government, this is the high school I went to, this is the university I am now attending, and then the government does the rest to determine how much funding the student may receive. Once we confirm their enrollment, the government mails the check directly to the student and the student can put it towards their tuition and fees. Um, so if your son or daughter has not done that application yet, make sure they go in and submit that application. And then once in university, the government continues the support through other scholarships. For example, the $1,000 Jason Lang Scholarship, which is for students who are studying at 80% of a full course load and earning a 3.2 GPA on those two semesters of study, um, or else the Louise McKinney, which is a $2,500 scholarship, and they have to earn a higher GPA of 3.7. So our financial aid and awards webpage on our website has lots of good information about scholarships. Um, you find us under students and under student services. You'll find the financial aid and awards webpage. Students can go there and on that page, the, the first thing they'll notice is upcoming deadlines for various competitions. So we try to have a central place where students can look for that information. We advertise our scholarship and bursary information through the, the weekly newsletter that students will receive by email. 
Um, we try to put posters around campus. There's information on our website. Some things will go on social media, some on the digital, digital screens across campus. So there's various ways to advertise that information. We have scholarship programs that might be specific to a degree program. We have leadership and community service scholarship opportunities. And then, as I said earlier, we also have a bursary assistance program that students can um, submit an application for. And in addition to all of that that the university ourselves might offer, there are external scholarship opportunities that students can look for as well. A, a good example of that is the Edmonton Community Foundation. On their website, they have a list of all kinds of scholarship opportunities for students and the various deadlines that might apply to, to those opportunities. I think the most important thing for students to remember, and I've heard this already this evening, is that Students need to be proactive and need to be seeking out those opportunities. Um, the, the students need to find the opportunity for themselves. The opportunity is not going to find the student. And so it involves work on the part of the student to be looking for those scholarship opportunities and finding out when those deadlines might be and what's involved in submitting an application if one is required. So we, did, we try to help that a little bit with our website. Um, we have a scholarship listing page and students can filter that listing by external opportunities and it lists awards that may uh, apply to a student attending one of our degree programs. So we don't offer engineering at Concordia, so we're not going to advertise any engineering scholarships. But if they're in a Bachelor of Arts or maybe a Bachelor of Management program, um, we might list some of those external opportunities. But really the important thing to impress upon students is that there's no one certain time of the year to be doing this activity. Scholarships are offered all year long. Everyone has a different deadline. And the only way to find them sometimes is you need to just constantly be looking throughout the year. You may have missed a deadline if you just wait till a certain time in the year. So students just need to be proactive in looking for those opportunities throughout the entire year. And they can always come in and see us if they have further questions. A financial tip that we like to give students is really that whole idea of making a budget. You know, just as we might make plans, uh, you know, a financial plan for building a house or maybe going on a vacation. Students should make a financial plan for going to university. And so together with parents, students can, you know, go over the costs of what university is going to be and create a realistic plan of how they're going to pay for it. Um, work on work out how much it's going to cost you for the year for tuition books, but don't overlook the living costs as well, because there's costs for transportation, uh, contributing to food and rent if they're doing that, and then just leisure time activities. So planning that information ahead of time in a budget helps to reduce the stress of going to university. There are lots of apps that students can use to manage their finances, and the financial habits you encourage in your emerging adults today will benefit them for their entire life. Students probably already know that tuition is due on the first day of class, and they can view what they owe through their online statement of account. And they can easily make an online payment. In fact, I was showing a student the other day how to make a bill payment out of her out of her bank's app on her phone. She had never done it before. And so we showed her how to make create a new payee and create Concordia as the payee. And her student ID number is her account number. And then she indicated how much she wanted to make that payment for and submit. And she didn't realize it was so easy to make an online payment from her bank account. Winter term statements um, can be viewed if the student is already registered for winter term. So if, you're, if your students are not registered or haven't picked their winter term courses, I really encourage them to do that because it helps to understand what the costs are for the entire year, as well as securing a seat in a class because classes can fill up. And so a student may wait too long and then find out, oh, the class that I really need to take is full now. And I may have to wait till the following academic year to take that class so that they have not picked their winter term classes. Encourage them to do that. 
Now, students who are paying their fees with a student loan are advised not to make a duplicate payment on the first day of class, but to let their funding come in first and then checking their online statement of account to see what the remaining balance is. Students have till the end of September to make sure that balance owing is zero dollars. After September 30th, we start charging financial penalties in the form of interest on overdue accounts. So these are some deadlines and things that students need to know and be prepared for. So speaking of student loans, um, students, not everyone needs to borrow money to pay for university. But if you have determined that you will be borrowing money, students should consider applying for a government student loan or student financial assistance first before considering private lending options. And there's a few reasons for that. The Canada Student Loan and Grant Program is designed to help Canadian citizens and permanent resident students meet the costs of post-secondary. Alberta students apply using the Student Aid Alberta online application. And, you know, certainly if students need help with that funding application, we can do that in our office with them. We can do it virtually with you and your students at home. Um, so we're here to support that application process so that it goes through cleanly. And so students help to help students understand what they're getting into when they borrow money and realize that they have to pay back that money. And so we like to educate students on that whole process. This may be the first time in their life that they've ever had to borrow some money, except for maybe mom and dad on occasion, but it may be the first time that they've had a real debt. And so we want them to understand their responsibilities related to that. The, the good thing about student loans is that student loans are interest free while students are in full time study. And the best news is that effective this past year on April 1st, the government of Canada announced that Canada student loans are interest free, even in repayment. So if a student borrows money through the Canada student loan program, they're going to pay it back, but they won't ever be charged interest on that student loan. And that's one of the benefits of using the government's program. Uh, some students may not need to borrow money to pay for university, but they still may qualify and be eligible for the Canada Student Grant for full-time students. So we encourage students to come in and talk to one of our financial aid advisors to help them identify if they're eligible for the grant. And if they're eligible for the grant, we will help them fill out that funding application and make their request just for the grant portion. They don't have to take a student loan. So, you know, we, we offer virtual and in-person appointments. Um, that information is on our website of how to book one of those appointments. And lastly, just to close up here, I just want to, you know, reiterate for students to get organized, get connected, get involved. These are all some of the things that have been spoken about tonight. Um, successful students tell us that communication and planning are the primary keys to managing university finances effectively. Thinking ahead and seeking out advice will make a huge difference in heading off problems. I know many people find talking about financial matters to be awkward or uncomfortable. Wages, savings, and amounts of debt are often considered private information. However, one of the most important steps in planning your finances is realizing that communication is essential. Communication with your family or other people that may be helping you to pay for school and communication with your school regarding the payment of that tuition and paying that bill. And so we're here in the Financial Aid and Awards Office to help students with all of that. We encourage them to seek us out, book an appointment. Um, they can also reach us by email. And uh, we have a phone number as well. So students can look that up and, and reach out to us. And we're here to help. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. And I'll turn it back to you, Angela. Thanks so much, Margie, uh, and thanks for all that you do on campus. Margie and her team will frequently be found out in the uh, in the Tegler Center, uh, giving out free stuff and just trying to educate students on uh, funding options and scholarships as well. It's quite shocking how many uh, scholarships go un unclaimed because no one actually um, uh, applies for them. So, um, so in, in, encourage them to look at those. It does take a little bit extra work. These are great things to do during reading week, but keep an eye on those deadlines, as Margie said. Thanks, Margie.
Um, our next uh, opportunity is study abroad. We have a very significant um, go abroad program uh, here on campus. In today's globalized world, studying abroad has become a worldwide phenomenon. And why is that? Uh, because studying abroad is an invaluable experience. Uh, I've myself done it a couple times uh, in my studies, and whether it is just a study abroad semester, an internship abroad, or even the summer program that we offer, uh, the immersion into a new culture and a new way of life transform both the student's personal and professional life. Hence, it is one of the most life-changing travel experiences. Uh, we actually offer two uh, really interesting, uh, unique dual degrees program. We have our management duals degree program where students can do uh, a one year with us in their management program, two years in Beijing, China, and one year back uh, with us and earn two degrees in that four years. And quite often there's quite a bit of funding, if not full funding for the whole time that they're in Beijing. Uh, we also do have a um, uh, one that's very similar in, in France as well. So two years with us in our Bachelor of Arts in, in French, and then one year in uh, France, and they earn a degree there as well as here in two degrees in three years. They do have to be a little more fluent in uh, French though. Uh, but we have a really great resource on our website that uh, if you go to our website slash international slash study dash abroad, uh, students can actually... Uh, use the drop down features to uh, find out what they want to study or where they want to study and see all the opportunities. We have over 100 partnerships in 28 countries. So students could be doing um, studying in Brazil, in Portugal. Uh, I think we have some in China, in uh, the UK. There's We have ones all over the world. So have students uh, be sure that they're they're looking at those options because that's a great way to get travel. Um, uh, they would only so most most often they'll only pay uh, Concordia tuition. Uh, some travel costs may be involved, but as Margie said, there are a ton of scholarships available for students as well. Uh, another option, uh, um, sorry, um, opportunity for students is uh, the Career Services Center. I know we touched on it earlier, uh, but at some point students will need to get involved in that big three of career prep activities, you know, career planning, some experiential learning and networking. Uh, now those things can possibly wait till second semester if they're feeling overwhelmed, but it is something that they should do at some point in their time at Concordia is meet with our career advisor go over their resume, talk about interview tips. Uh, and I speak from experience um, because I just went through a whole hiring process for one of our recruiters on campus. And I went through 120 resumes and I probably could only pick out a dozen, if that, that were actually done really well uh, and were specified to the job. Um, so it's really important that students understand um, how to apply, how to get their resume all set up uh, so that they are ready once they graduate to get out into the workforce. Another opportunity on campus is something I, I I guess it's an opportunity, but I really wanted to reiterate the safe, uh, the safety that we have on campus. We do have a security staff on campus uh, available 24-7 uh, uh, on campus. Uh, we do have uh, on our website uh, um, security tips and training, you know, things uh, don't leave your backpacks uh, around and 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 tips such as that. Uh, we also have a behavioral support and intervention team uh, that was uh, formed to help students uh, and faculty and staff identify people in Concordia University um, community who exhibit behaviors that can endanger themselves uh, or those around them. Um, we do have uh, Lost and Found, uh, all of our um, uh, security are uh, trained in first aid. Uh, and just so you know, we are a smoke-free campus, uh, which is really great. Um, so our security are, the, are around, they patrol, they monitor the campus for security and safety issues. Uh, and we do provide announcements in the event that we've had a breach in that security, or if there's a concern about um, something going on on campus, we do that. We do a number of drills on campus as well throughout the year. So students after leaving high school thought they were going to get out of fire fire alarm drills. Well, we do them here too, and a number of other drills just, just, just to ensure students' safety on campus. Uh, we also have a great uh, opportunity for students to engage in our innovation launch pad. Um, this is a great uh, research um, um, 
uh, entrepreneurship. They can get, uh, sorry, individual coaching. Uh, it is one of our research hubs that we have. Uh, and then other research hubs that we have is our uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, we have some non-credit courses available. Uh, we have startup support for Q students starting uh, or growing an AI-based business. We have our McNeil Center for Applied Renewable Energy uh, and in that we have our renewable energy seminar series. Students can explore renewable energy solutions and learn about careers in the renewable energy sector. And then finally, we do have our student research forum, uh, which was uh, established in 2019. It, we were, we have a student poster co competition, which highlights the excellence of our student researchers. We are very proud of their successes and Q is committed to fostering the next generation, generation of research leaders. So we engage students in research at every single level from from their, they could have a research project in their first year and can enter into this uh, student poster competition. So that that's just uh, touching on, uh, that's just a toe dip into the opportunities available on campus. Um, they can connect with any of us uh, on campus and find out more if they're looking at doing something, you know, faculty will be able to highlight this. They can go and speak to their deans about further opportunities. Uh, if they have an idea, if they're, they want to try something different, they should connect with some of us uh, uh, on campus. Next thing I want to just go over quickly before we hit our resources and our last slide is our important dates on campus. So this is probably, an, uh, uh, it's really important uh, that students keep an idea, uh, you know, that time management piece is keeping an eye on the important dates that are happening on campus. Uh, so the first one, that super important date, well, today was new student orientation, that was a super important date, uh, is our fall semester starts tomorrow. First day of classes is tomorrow. We're all very excited on campus to welcome everybody back, not just even our first year students, but all of our continuing students. Uh, and then we'll take a break for three days. Don't ask me why. And then we'll be back on Tuesday, which happens to be my birthday. And we're going to get going off that fall term. September 8th, you're going to hear this word census day. Technically, census day is that last day for students to add or drop classes and get a refund. So students that are, you know, they get their first class and like, this isn't going to work. Eight o'clock class is not going to work for me. Or they've decided, oh, I, I picked up a part time job. Maybe I want to reduce my course load to four. This September 8th is going to be the last day that they can do that and get a refund. The next important date is going to be October 31st. Happy Halloween. Uh, it's going to be the last day to withdraw from a full course schedule. So if a student, for whatever reason, uh, needs to withdraw from their full course load for or for and completely withdraw from Q, uh, we uh, there is a partial refund available for that. So that would be the last day. Um, the Then don't forget, we are closed from November 13th to 17th. We ha will have no classes, even though we'll, I know I've got some events going on on campus. And then November 24th is the last day for students to withdraw from classes. So if they're struggling in a class and they're not sure if they're going to pass, they, first of all, I always recommend go talk to your professor. I, I myself just spoke to my professor thinking I was going to fail a class and I ended up passing. Um, but this is the last day to uh, withdraw from that class and it will not count towards their GPA. They will still be listed on their, on their transcript as a WD, but it will not factor into their GPA moving forward. December 8th is our last day of uh, academic classes. And then final exams uh, hit uh, December 11th to the 18th. Uh, and that's just the fall term. Uh, the, the winter term, all those dates, everything is going to be in our academic schedule. And you can go to our website and you can see those dates. So before you start planning winter getaways or um, beach holidays for spring break or Easter, make sure you're checking our academic schedule uh, because we would hate for a student to miss their final exam um, because a trip was planned without knowing when their exams are uh, and we do have exams on Saturdays so students should be aware of that again on their course outline it should already be outlined when their exams are so get them to to talk about that um, and if you need to plan around those exams make sure you do. Um, Nicole was talking about some of the events we do have uh, in our newsroom on our website. If you click on the newsroom, there is a list of events. 
The first cu couple that are coming up is September 7th at Speed Friending at Q. And then uh, an event I'm currently planning right now is October 6th. And that is going to be a graduate studies fair for anyone, any students it's to start looking at if they're planning on doing study after they finish their undergrad degree, whether that is one of our graduate programs or whether it's, uh, we've got about 14 other institutions coming on campus uh, from law schools to med schools to uh, you name it, we're going to have a lot of schools on campus to let students know what they can do with their Q degree. Uh, you can go to our newsletter, or sorry, our newsroom, click on that events calendar, uh, and there's also that weekly newsletter that students get that really talk to them about important dates and uh, events happening on campus. So lastly, we're very excited Together we, together, we can support students in reaching their full potential. You play an integral role in student success, and we want to help you be the best support for your student um, during their transition to university. We have compiled a web page uh, full of resources to help you support your new students uh, on this one, one web page. If you go to this uh, page, uh, there is going to be a resource guide that we encourage you to go through with your emerging adult uh, to outline all the services, all the supports, all the contact information. Uh, there's also an FAQ. So if you're like, where do I send um, my my daughter to, if they want to drop a class or where do I send them if they want to get if they need to um, apply for a scholarship? All of those is going to all of those questions are going to be answered on that website. Uh, and you can sign up for our, our monthly newsletter if you want to stay informed on some of those things without bugging your your new Q student every uh, all the time. We are starting a new uh, newsletter starting next month. And it'll keep you up to date on important dates and events that, you know, you may want to encourage your students to get involved in and anything else that you want to uh, that um, that is going to help support your student while they're with us. Um, remember that this isn't a handoff. This is going to be a shared responsibility and we want to support you and your student and gradually your emerging adult will be able to assert their independence. At least that's what we hope. Uh, allow them to make their own mistakes allow them to face their own consequences and solve their own problems. Let this be a time to grow a stronger relationship by sharing in their successes and their struggles. Keep on communicating and build their confidence while supporting them financially, emotionally, as well as academically. Uh, set boundaries and encourage them to seek out and use the resources on campus. Part of the experience at university is learning to problem solve and communicate. They're really lucky to have you in their corner. We're also going to be in that corner with you. These next few years will be a time of growth and discovery for your student as well as you. Uh, we're excited your student as well as you have chosen uh, Concordia University of Edmonton, and we're proud to welcome you and your family into our close-knit community. Thank you for enjoy. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, we're happy to uh, answer any questions you have. Uh, if I don't know, and if someone else doesn't know that's on, uh, some of my panelists aren't uh, don't know. We can find out for you, uh, and at any time you can reach out, and we'll be there to help uh, answer any of those questions. <laughs>